What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggle's TV Daily Rewind. This is where we go back a week and give you all of your tech news in one, I feel like I have a little hair up there, single video. And I'm recording this on my Galaxy S21 Ultra so you get a better idea. And it's ultra wide, 4K60. So how does it look and how does it sound? But this is a great, fantastic, blatant array of news for the Galaxy line of phones and the Z Fold 3, potentially what it's going to look like. Uh, Galaxy S21 news. We have news on a lot of stuff. So check out this week. Let me know what your favorite news story is of the week. And we'll see you in the next one. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is if you have the Galaxy S20 Ultra like myself, right here, I finally, I have the unlocked version, finally got the One UI 3.0 update for this phone. Finally, it's crazy. Um, it's okay. I haven't dived too much deep into it on this version of the phone. The thing I just don't like, and I said it before on the One UI 3.0 version of the Note 20, because it's basically the same. When you swipe down, I just there's like a slight delay when you want to see your notifications. It kind of annoys me. So I got to look into making that quicker for sure. But yeah, it's a little bit too slow. It feels a little bit slower than 2.5 did. But yeah, it's out right now. Check for the update on your Galaxy One UI. Uh, your Galaxy Z Fold 2, I should say, for the newest update. I got it. I know it came out for Sprint, people, team. It's basically out for everybody, so check for it. And the last story of the day, Galaxy S21 Ultra, and I assume the 21 and 21 Plus, are beginning to ship this information. I actually got an email from one of my viewers. Thank you so much, uh, Mark. Mark sent over a, uh, a, a FedEx shipping label showing that his is shipped and that it's scheduled to deliver on January 27th. And he ordered directly from Samsung, ordered the Galaxy S21 Ultra. So I would expect myself, I haven't received my email yet, but I would expect basically everybody at this point to get emails now for the Galaxy S21 series of phones, especially if you order through Samsung, expect it to arrive on Wednesday. To be proactive if you want, I haven't done this, I just thought of it right now. If you go on FedEx's website, go to tracking and then it, I think it's called advanced tracking. You can actually see packages in, that are coming for you in advance, even before the company has sent you a tracking number. You can check that stuff out. So sign up for a FedEx account if you don't have one, it's free. And look at advanced tracking and you should be able to see if there's any new packages coming, especially the ones from Samsung. So do that and uh, yeah, they're shipping out right now. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day for the people getting the Galaxy S21, 21 Plus or 21 Ultra like myself, there is a second update already being rolled out to this phone as we speak. Now, when you get the phone, you'll at least have one update to do, but you potentially might have two. It just depends on which firmware is installed on the phone. But this is already the second update that's being pushed out and rolling out for the S21 series of phones. Now, what's included? How big's the update? We don't know. No one, it hasn't been leaked out enough for it yet. It's probably just bug fixes, things like that. Things that'll make the phone feel a little bit smoother, you know, carve off the rough edges so it's nice and, you know, smooth and good from there. I don't think they've added, you know, any features or anything that we're missing, but we'll have to wait and see. As more information comes out about this, I'll let you know, but just be prepared. You might have two updates. You'll at least have one update when you get the phone tomorrow. A lot of people are getting the phone tomorrow, but the real release date is Friday. I know I get mine tomorrow, but yeah, we'll just wait and see. And the last story of the day is about Samsung's Good Luck app. They've updated two more modules in here. And if you don't know what Samsung's Good Luck app is, it's a completely customizable app that within it has modules, which is AKA more apps that allow you to control your phone in so many different ways and give you a ton of control over the phone. It's really a fantastic app. Well, the two modules that have been updated are Sound Assistant and also Lockstar. Now, I'll be honest with you, for some reason, I don't have Lockstar showing up in it. I know I had in the past, but when I looked through all the modules, Lockstar is not in here. So I don't know what's going on with mine. Now I can sideload it. Um, you know, I'll put you, a, I'll give you a link down below in the article. If you look towards the bottom, you can side, there's links to sideload the app, you know, AKA download it without downloading it from here. 
But if you don't want to do that or you're just curious what is new with the Lockstar update, Lockstar One UI 3 allows you to fully modify your lock screen, moving and changing every UI element. But now they've edited, allow you to edit the layout for the landscape lock screen and lock screen shortcuts can now be placed vertically and horizontally. The other module that got updated is Sound Assistant. This app allows you to take full control over your sound. So for instance, the one, the way I personally use it for is whenever I do the volume, it controls the media side of it rather than, you know, if I was, it might control the, the, the call or whatever, like there's ways in deeper ways to control some of the settings in here and customize some of the look of it as well. But the big update that came within here, in case you're curious, of what to expect with this update is you end up getting a One UI 3.0 style volume panel theme. You get media manner mode, so media volume is also muted when vibration or silent mode is enabled. Also, there's now a Bluetooth metronome, which gives you the ability to synchronize video and voice on Bluetooth devices, which is gonna be great for uh, making sure when you're using like maybe a cheaper pair of uh, Bluetooth buds or something like that, that the voice will match up with what you're watching on the screen. And custom vibrations, the ability to customize vibration patterns available from One UI 3.1. So a really nice update to the sound assistant. Let's get into the tech news. Today is Galaxy Day, kinda, for the people that got it early. I got it early, got the black 256 Galaxy S21 Ultra. And uh, the color is amazing, I really like it, that matte black. It does look like it's gonna get some fingerprints, maybe, potentially. But yeah, it's the latest and greatest from Samsung. Um, yeah, it actually is, it's heavy, first of all. And then the other thing is, is that the screen feels really small, especially compared to my Galaxy Z Fold 2, which, it should, I mean, this is gigantic compared to this phone, check it out. It's way bigger, I mean, it seems bigger anyways, but yeah, I'll have some videos on this tomorrow, starting tomorrow anyway. And then also, what else came is I got my Galaxy Buds Pro, awesome. I've got some, uh, some I gotta make some videos on this as well. And then the uh, Galaxy Smart Tags, I haven't opened these up yet. I have a story about these though, and some, some features that they, they have, but first, keep grabbing all these different devices. Let's talk about the Galaxy S21 Ultra. And the reason being is that right when I turned on the phone and got it all set up, I checked for updates and there was an update. And we kind of knew there was gonna be an update. It's not hugely surprising, but it's a big update. It's 640 megs. And what that update brings with it is it says on it that it's going to, the performance of the camera has been improved. Doesn't go into a lot of detail about it. It also says the Wi-Fi connectivity and stability have been improved. The performance of the fingerprint recognition has been improved. Overall stability of functions improved. The security of devices also been improved. So these are all great, great things. And uh, let's check out that fingerprint. Nice, huh? Look at that, so fast, beautiful. So yeah, a bunch of nice little updates. I have the unlocked version. You should probably have it as well. Just go into software setting, settings, you know, settings, and then work your way down all the way to the bottom, software update, download and install, check for the update, and you should see it from there. Next story is all about the Galaxy Smart Tags and a feature that these have that can potentially not only help you find things, but help you automate your life. Now this tweet comes from Max Weinbeck who's shined a little light on this and I haven't set mine up yet so maybe that's why I didn't realize this but he says, oh, Galaxy Smart Tags can be used for automation. You could keep one on your desk that turns on lights and finds your phone if you lose it around the house. And when we click into it, you can see let the, so one of the things if you turn it on, you can let the tag find your device. You can use a button for automations on the Galaxy Smart Tag. So there's a button on there and it says you can start automations when you press the button if the tag is connected to your phone. And that has some other things as well for you know battery life and ringtones and volumes and held. And what that means basically is that, you know, say you sit this on your desk or on a table or somewhere in your house, you can press that button and have that do something. Not only find your phone, but it could also Maybe turn your lights on, if you have smart lights. Um, 
open your front door lock if you have a smart lock, like I just did a video on a smart lock today um, on the Halo Touch lock, which I can unlock with Google Assistant. I could potentially unlock that with this button from far away. There's a lot of features you could do as long as they're smart devices they will potentially work by pressing the button on this. There's a million use cases. I can only think of two because I'm an idiot. But other than that, you're potentially gonna do some really cool things with this besides just finding things. Let me know what you're gonna use this for if you use it as a smart device in the comments below. And our last story of the day, again, about the demise, the cancellation, the end of the Galaxy Note 21 and the series overall potentially never ever coming out except for the last version being the Note 20 Ultra. Now this tweet comes from Ice Universe and it's also taken from Samsung's official newsroom website. And in this tweet, he says, I don't see any description of the Galaxy Note. And when we go into this Samsung newsroom article, which is the official Samsung site, it says in 2021, market demand is likely to recover to pre-COVID levels backed by gradual recovery in the economy and accelerating expansion of the 5G market. The mobile communications business aims to strengthen its leadership in the premium segment through the Galaxy S21 series and the expansion of the foldable category, including the Galaxy Z Fold and the Galaxy Z Flip. What is missing from that article, which is also considered to be a premium device? That is the Galaxy Note 21, 21 Ultra, just the, the Note line in, in, in general, it's not mentioned in that article. That means two things, either there's gonna be no note of any kind, or there's gonna be a fan edition of it, like a cheap, cheaper version. Maybe they'll continue doing something like that. So you'll still be, be able to potentially get a note, but not an actual premium, premium note. But I'm, it's looking like the note is again, dead. That's right. We've got one story today, kind of a slow news story in terms of tech, unless you're all about investing and you saw the Rob, Robin, Hid, Robin Hood drama and GameStop stock going through the roof the last couple of days, and now it's kind of taken a, a downfall. Uh, but that's a completely different story. I wanted to talk about a story for the Galaxy S21, not the 21 Ultra like I have. Um, it, this is actually, it's interesting, and I saw this on Reddit, and now it kind of makes me want a Galaxy S21. I'm not gonna get it because of this, but it's cool enough to actually want to get the phone because of this, and it kind of has to do with the back of the phone and the logo where it says Samsung. This is really, really cool. And if you have this phone, I want you to try this. Let's check this out. Now, again, I got this from Reddit, so I'll link it down below if you wanna check it out. And it says right here, it's from, uh, I can't even read the name, Sagmundi, Sagmundi. And he says, covering the S21's flashlight lights up the Samsung logo. And you can see, hands over the flash, and it illuminates basically the edges, the bottom, probably the top as well and the Samsung logo, making it looks like it's like it like it turns on or something. That's amazing. This is so, so cool. I tried it on my S21 Ultra. It doesn't work, unfortunately. And I dug a little deeper into the comments and there's a comment in here as well with a, a bunch of up, upticks, a bunch of likes. It says, I have this phone and was freaking out last night. You don't even have to cover up the flash. The edges and logo stand out anyways. It's cool AF. And I didn't, I mean, I haven't really watched a ton of people's videos about this phone, but this is cool. If you have this phone, you gotta try this out. You gotta tell me, send me a picture of it. It's so cool. I, I tried it on mine, but obviously it doesn't work. Nothing illuminates in the back. It seems to only be the S21 edition. I don't think it's even the plus edition. Again, just the S21. So if you have it, check it out. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is like a technology that is going to change our lives and make it so much cooler and more convenient. And it's coming from Xiaomi. Check out this tweet. In this tweet, you can see, we're excited to bring you the remote charging technology. Mi Air Charge technology charges multiple devices simultaneously while you're gaming walking around, or even when something's in the way. No strings attached, another giant leap forward in wireless charging 
technology. So this is literally no wires, nothing stuck to your phone. And some more tweets, uh, this time from Mishan Argarwal, who says, Mi Air Charge Tech by Xiaomi can charge multiple devices at five watts, so not super fast. Physical obstacles do not reduce charging efficiency. Xiaomi plans to make it work with not just smartphones, but wearable tech like earphones and watches and other home devices like speakers in the future. His other tweet says, beacon antenna broadcast position information with low power consumption. The receiving antenna array composed of 14 antenna antennas converts the millimeter wave signal emitted by the charging pile into electric energy through the rectifier circuit. So this is literally, this is true wireless charging, like wireless charging that where you have to like grab your phone and put it on some device and they call that wireless charging just because it's not plugged in to there. That's not really wireless charging. This is wireless charging. This is the future and we're so close to it. It's crazy, crazy. Now, Samsung will probably come out with something. I've heard it's good. There's going to come out in about three years. But the other part of this is like, is it safe? It seems a little not safe. Is it going to cause cancer? Is it going to make you sick? Is it going to be completely safe? I don't know. That's the only thing I would be worried about. And I saw a couple of people write about that on Twitter as well. What do you guys think? Do you think it's going to be safe? Do you think it's amazing? I think it's totally amazing. It's so cool looking. Looking or because you can't see it. It looks cool, right? It seems cool. And our last story of the day has to do with the Galaxy S21. As you know, the S21 series of phones do not, does not come with a charging brick in the box. You get the phone and uh, some uh, manuals, the SIM ejection tool, and you get uh, a charging cable. But you don't get the you know the 25 watt charging brick. And they said they're doing that to help with the environment. They want to be environmentally friendly and this and that. And I go on Reddit today and someone, because they wanted to buy the 25 watt charger, they bought the 25 watt charger from Samsung. So what does that cause? It causes Samsung to have to charge, to send the charger in, an, in a different box and on a separate plane slash uh, truck, which obviously hurts emissions. And look what else they did as well. Look at the size of this freaking box it's gigantic samsung's talk about saving the environment by not packing a charger with the s21 phones yet when they ship just the charger it comes in this box and the box is like 20 times bigger than the charger itself it's freaking crazy and i know that's the european charger it looks a little bit bigger than normal but it's ridiculous just these companies i know samsung's not alone apple doesn't include a charger and i believe xiaomi's not going to as well anymore just come out and say we're not including a charger because we want to save money we want to maximize our profits don't go out there and say you're doing it to save the environment because that's bs it's it, it all comes down to money and and as much as these companies want to say it's all about the environment it's really more about saving money because if it was cheaper to include the charger they would do it trust me they would we only have one story today very slow today's saturday you would think it's a freaking holiday it's so slow in the world of tech right now and Partly because we're kind of in the in-between period, like Samsung just released their Galaxy S21 phones and then their other phones probably won't be out for a few months. Apple's going to be releasing some tablets and things like that in the coming months. And again, we're kind of in the in-between period right now, but it should still be interesting with leaks and things like that. But I love this guy's renders. Ben Geskin put out a tweet and in the tweet he's going to show us what potentially he thinks the Galaxy Z Fold 3 is going to look like. He's done something like this recently in the past, but he made a new one. Let's check it out. So again, this is from Ben Geskin. I'll link his tweet down below. Check it out, follow him. He is amazing with these um, the renders that he creates. He has his own YouTube channel as well, so if you click on his profile, you should be able to find that. But anyways, check this out. So. On the back of the phone, you're gonna get the same uh, camera setup that you would in terms of the way it looks as the Galaxy S21 Ultra, at least from his point of view, what it could potentially look like. The other thing that you see on here is that you do see that the screen on the front, I can't see it from his, and I don't believe it should anyway, have a camera uh, showing on the front screen, meaning that it would be under display camera with the front and the, 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 the screens on these should be very similar to what we got 
with the S uh, Z, Fold th Z Fold 2, very similar in size. Very, They'll be a little bit smaller this time, but literally less than a percent. When you open the Z Fold 3 up, you're getting this huge display again. It'll be basically the same size as the Z Fold 2, but again, no camera punch hole this time on the screen. It'll be underneath the screen, so your cameras will be underneath there. Hopefully they'll work just as well as if they, you could actually see them, because if they don't, then all this is for like, not and just to make it look beautiful, but it's, the camera on the screen doesn't bother me anyway. But again, under display cameras on the front, on the, on the inside as well. And then you can see an S Pen, obviously. The S Pen, it is supposed to have S Pen support. There's rumors that the S Pen would go inside of the phone. I guess we'll have to wait and see or see if they you have to get a special case to house it. But regardless, S Pen support is supposed to be definitely coming to the Z Fold 3. The power button's probably gonna be in the volume, will probably also be in the same spots as well, along with the fingerprint sensor. I would assume on the side of the phone again, which I'm completely fine with. I love the fingerprint sensor on the side. The physical uh, fingerprint sensor works fantastic. It's really fast. Overall, what do you think of this look of the Z Fold 3 if it looks like this? I know a lot of you guys are wanting this. Mostly the, the people that have held out from the Z Fold 2 now to the Z Fold 3, it's mostly people that want S Pen support. So obviously we should be getting it with this. The other ones I think that are holding out are potentially just the price, I would assume. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is about the Galaxy Z Flip 3 Samsung's folding phone that just folds in half, doesn't fold this way folds that way. The phone that I don't love, but some people do. Regardless, let's talk about this tweet from Mr. Ross Young. This tweet says, panel shipments may start in May for the Z Flip 3, which would likely mean a June, July launch. We said this earlier as well. Fold 3 may or may not be the same time too early to say. Now he's put this information out before, it's kind of just reiterating this again, that he's confident in what he has said in the past, because this is as, as recent as yesterday's information. So Z Flip, the Z Flip 3 looking to launch June or July, which is, I believe it's a little bit earlier than normal. And then the Z Fold 3 may launch at the same time. And let's talk about that. Do I, because I, I'm more excited about the Z Fold 3. Z Fold 3, I was gonna grab it, but it's charging, so I'm not gonna grab it. Z Fold 3. I wouldn't be surprised if it launches in June or July, just because um, it looks like they're probably trying to aim to have their phones out, their flagship phones, out every six months or so, instead of every, you know, I guess, it was still six months, but it, now that they changed the time frame of the release of the Galaxy S21 Ultra to the end of January, if you count six months on from that, you got February, March, April, May, June, July. So you're probably looking at the end of July for the release of the Galaxy Z Flip 3 and probably the Z Fold 3 as well. If the Z Fold 3 comes out a little bit later, then you're probably looking at maybe August, the end of August, somewhere in that time frame. But that's not that far away, especially if you're looking for one of the best phones still. Z Fold 2 is awesome, and Z Fold 3 obviously would just be that much better. And the last story of the day comes from H. Wang. He found a bunch of photos of the Galaxy S21 Ultra in a bunch of different colors uh, from a Korean uh, uh, forum site. So let's check these out. So he's the first set of photos are from the uh, the Phantom Navy color, which looks beautiful, which you can't buy anywhere else right now, at least in here in America, you can't. Phantom Navy is really, really good looking color. I'm loving it. And then we have the Phantom Brown, which as much as I wouldn't love to say I have a brown colored phone, this brown is pretty dope. Looks quite delectable if you're into that. And then uh, lastly, you get the Phantom Titanium. Again, also really, really nice color. And I like the housing, at least the way the housing of the, the camera module looks with that kind of uh, design uh, around there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. New videos every single day. My question out to you guys is, out of those three colors, the brown, the blue, the titanium, which one would you choose if you could? I would go with the Phantom Navy Blue. Let me know what, about you guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you down the road.